The number eight is officially free of Teresa Earnhardt and DEI, plus Chase Briscoe headed to Joe Gibbs Racing in 2025. Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. Go ahead and ring the bells because it is officially official. The number eight is free of Teresa Earnhardt and DEI. And honestly, I said I'm gonna stop calling her the Wicked Witch of the Southeast, and I am. I'm going to stop calling her that because she did let the trademark on the number eight officially expire. As of June 14th, the US Patent and Trademark Office has listed the number eight from DEI, the trademark that they had on that number, as canceled. It is dead, it no longer exists after countless years, I mean decades at this point, of ownership and her continuing to renew it to make sure that it was only in the possession of DEI, she has let the number eight go. Now, of course, we have talked already about how Dale Earnhardt Jr. Holdings, DEJ Holdings, has already applied for the trademark of the number eight. And they applied for that back on May 14th, and it could take all the way until Q4 or into Q1 of 2025 for that to get officially approved, but it is fully expected for them to land that trademark and have that in their possession, which is great news for NASCAR fans. And honestly, hats off to Teresa and her her legal team, her business team, whoever is working with her for allowing that to expire and allowing it to go to the guy that made it famous. Of course, uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. talked about it on his podcast, which he was going, which he name dropped, which he name dropped because Myself and Joey Tartamella have been on top of this from the beginning, and uh, it would have been a great soundbite to have, which is smart that he didn't do it because you can bet your bottom dollar I would have had that in the intro to this. But it's cool that he addressed it and said that, yeah, you know, the trademark became open and he and Kelly had a conversation about it and they decided that they, you know, of course, wanted to have it. And why wouldn't you? I mean, at the end of the day, that's the number that made him famous. That's the number that he had majority of his success with. Why not go ahead and have that in your possession? So fully expected for them to get it, but officially official, the number eight is no longer part of DEI, no longer part of Teresa Earnhardt. They no longer have control of it, which at the end of the day is great. Dale Earnhardt Jr. mentioned that there's not going to be a like huge run of, you know, number eight vintage stuff out there, uh, you know, recreated vintage stuff when if they ever get it, they will likely get it as well. Um, he said, you know, it could be a few things that they do. Maybe he used it on one of their cars, something along those lines. But it doesn't sound like he has any grand plans for it. It's more of just like wanting to have it, which I can fully understand there as well. But he's also sitting on a small fortune if they were to create some sort of throwback line with that uh, number on it. So, Good to see that it's now going back to Dale Jr. I saw a lot of people asking questions. Well, since it's public domain now, does that mean anybody can use it? <sighs> Technically, yes, but you're wading into some murky waters there. So you can use it, but that doesn't protect you from getting sued by the person that is applying for that trademark now. So Dale Earnhardt Jr. Holdings applied for it retroactively on May 14th. So until it gets approved, Obviously, people are like, well, it's public domain until it gets approved. Yes, but once it does get approved, they can retroactively go after anybody that used it in that approval time uh, period. So all that time where it's sitting in that approval process, yeah, they can go back and get you for that. So I would recommend not selling Dale Earnhardt Jr. number eight merchandise uh, in the meantime. So yeah, you can, maybe don't. I'm sure there's going to be some Etsy shop or some random, very respectable and reputable website that will be like, hey, get your Dale Earnhardt Jr. number eight merch here. Eh, I would maybe not do that. So Teresa Earnhardt hands it off to Dale Jr. At the end of the day, I think that's a good thing. The other big topic of this week will, of course, be who will replace Martin Truex Jr. at Joe Gibbs Racing in 2025. That name, that driver will be Chase Briscoe. He will be going to Joe Gibbs Racing, leaving the Ford family and joining the uh, Joe Gibbs Racing family, the TRD family. And I see a lot of people kind of questioning this move, like, why would he leave Ford, this and that? Well, it's a business decision, right? And he talked about that this weekend at Iowa. He said that he hopes to have something announced very soon. That could be this week, could be next week, uh, but fully expect him to go to Joe Gibbs Racing. And ultimately, he said, hey, I'm going to have, you know, twins are on the way. He's like, it has to make sense financially for me and my family. Uh, competition makes a lot of sense as well. And then he also mentioned even down to things like what airport teams fly out of because he said he doesn't live around where anybody else lives, um, which I didn't realize he lived out in the middle of nowhere, but good for him. I completely understand wanting to live in the middle of nowhere. Uh, it is very appealing. So for Chase, 
yeah, I think that the opportunity to go Joe Gibbs Racing is just too much to turn down, especially when what Ford is offering you is the 21 car of Wood Brothers, which, again, iconic number, great team, would love to see them succeed. They're not at the same level right now as the 19 is. The 19 is contending for wins week in and week out. The 21 is contending to try to beat the second Rick Ware racing car more often than not and not in the race two or three laps down. So for Chase... This just makes the the most sense, right? Moving over to Joe Gibbs Racing, and hopefully it works out for him, right? I, Gibbs, of course, does have a short leash at times. They certainly have pulled the plug on projects quickly with, with some drivers, and um, Eric Jones is a testament to that. Daniel Suarez, I mean, heck, even Matt Kenseth was competitive, and they still pulled the plug on him to put Eric Jones in that car. So, yeah, for Chase, it's kind of one of those, like, here's your top-tier equipment, and this is your best opportunity you've ever had in your NASCAR career. Got to capitalize on it at this point. I mean, he's four and a half seasons into his NASCAR Cup Series career at this point, and he's got one win to show for it. And don't get me wrong, Stuart Haas Racing certainly hasn't been a lights-out organization in that time frame, but... I don't know, man. He just hasn't run consistently well enough to be like, uh. at the end of the day, though, a ton of fans were like, why isn't Noah Gragson going to this ride? He has Bass Pro Shots money. Bass Pro's already on that car. It makes a lot of sense to slot him in there. Yeah, I just don't think that Noah and TRD maybe necessarily see eye to eye. Noah and Ty Gibbs being teammates, not exactly going to go over the smoothest. And Chase Briscoe brings a lot of money with him, right? He has Mahindra tractors with him, likely has High Point as well. For for Gibbs, it's a guy that they can slot into that seat and they don't really have to worry about going out and finding budget for him. He brings a lot of it with him. Where some other drivers that could potentially be out there or even moving up one of the drivers in the TRD pipeline, yeah, then you're like, well, we're probably going to have to find a budget for him, whether that's a Chandler Smith, a Sheldon Creed, Ryan Truex Jr., somebody along those lines. I know he's not a junior. Um, just a joke. Don't come at me in the comments so at the end of the day briscoe just makes the most sense and i honestly think that's fine right it's worth a trial run to see what he can do there especially because none of your other trd talent is necessarily lighting the world on fire moving eric jones back from legacy to joe gibbs racing like he's jamie mcmurray uh i can see the argument for it but at the end of the day he doesn't bring budget like chase briscoe does and at the yeah i mean if i say at the end of the day again i'm gonna be very upset with myself but uh, yeah, it, you have to go after guys that have a, a bit of budget with them uh, at times. And I think this is one of those situations where they're going to do that. John Hunter Nemechek probably could have had this right if he stayed in Xfinity for another year. Um, but he went ahead and went to Legacy and has done nothing of memory other than wrecking to people uh, this season. So Chase Briscoe to the 19 car. Uh, there's still a number of rides open out there and a number of things that are still going to happen. So we'll have to wait and see on that but let me know in the comments what you think about the eight the 19 and well anything else at this point like and subscribe to the channel follow me on tiktok at break card instagram and twitter at break card blog